Okay, we're going to continue on with the welfare economics section of this class. Um, last time we left off on uh, the basics of sort of calculating welfare um, with and without externalities. So we saw that um, if we introduce a tax or a, a policy in a market that's efficient without an externality, then we're, uh, incre we're uh, creating some deadweight loss. If we introduce a tax in uh, a market with an externality, then we're producing deadweight loss. Um, so now let's look at uh, policy choices. Let's um, think about which policy out of three different policies we can we can look at, uh, which one's going to be the most cost effective and which is going to be efficient. <clears throat> so we'll consider two firms with the following marginal abatement cost curves. So Firm A has a marginal abatement cost curve of 20 minus an EA, where EA is the emissions of firm A. So the emissions are on the x-axis here. Um, firm 2, or firm B, has a marginal abatement cost curve equal to 60 minus 3 EB, so the emissions of uh, firm B. So remember, abatement uh, costs them something, and so uh, we're going backwards here. The marginal abatement cost, um, uh, well, they're going to emit 20 units of emissions if they are not required to abate anything. So uh, that's what you can tell from this graph here. So uh, going out on e each curve intersects the x-axis or the emissions axis, axis at 20. So that says that if they're not required to reduce emissions, they will each emit 20 units of emissions. Uh, so right now, total emissions, um, total emissions for both firms would be EA plus EB equals 40. So 20 emissions for, uh, 20 units of emissions for firm A and 20 units for firm B. Um, but what if the optimal level of emissions, going back to our, um, our previous uh, lecture where we were equating or uh, setting the marginal abatement cost equal to the marginal damages, um, if the total, let's suppose the total emissions that are optimal are, are 20 units of emissions. So uh, suppose optimal emissions or efficient, economically efficient emissions um, is economically efficient emission level is 20. What are some ways to get there? How can we in, um, generate some policies to get us there? So policy choice one that's going to be on this uh, this graph here. Policy choice one quota emissions quota. That means that each firm abates ten units. So we have to cut this uh, the emissions level in half and uh, let each firm emit half of their half of the pollutants. So each firm would then emit 10 units of emissions. So then we can figure out what the abatement cost for each firm is. So if this is area A and this is area B, we can figure out what the abatement costs are. So policy choice one, um, quota, marginal abatement costs, marginal abatement costs firm A, equal to 20 minus EA, which is equal to, in this case, 20 minus 10, because we're, each firm is allowed to emit 10 units of emissions. So then the marginal abatement cost is equal to $10. So what's their total abatement cost? What's their total cost for abatement? It's going to be the area uh, of that triangle, so area A there. So that's going to be um, 10 times 10 divided by 2, 
which is equal to fifty dollars. How did I get that? Okay, so we're going the ten units of emissions they are abating. That's ten units of emissions they are abating because they want to produce twenty units of emissions, but they're required by law under this quota system, policy choice one, the quota to reduce their emissions to ten units. And we know that um, the height of this triangle is 10 because we know the, uh, the marginal abatement cost curve. So the area of that triangle is, is $50. What's the margin? How about for firm B? Marginal abatement cost for firm B is equal to 60 minus 3E B which is equal to 60 minus 3 times 10, which is equal to $30. So the total abatement cost for firm B is going to be the areas A and B. So that's going to be 30 times 10 divided by 2, which is equal to $150. So the total abatement cost for this policy, total abatement cost for the, the emissions quota is total abatement cost policy one equals $200. So now the question is, can we do better? Let's draw a line here. Can we do better than $200? Can we be more cost effective? What's another possible policy choice? So right now we've, we've got emissions quotas. This is pretty good because it's got us to the efficient level of emissions, but can we do better in terms of costs? Um, how about a different policy? So let's look at policy choice two. Policy two um, is a cap and trade program. Cap and trade program. So we, we're going to give each. In this case, we're still going to get to the efficient level of emissions, 20 units of emissions. But to, to get there, we're not going to require that each firm emits a certain amount. We're going to give each firm 10 emissions permits and and let them trade. So we know when we know or when firms can trade, they're going to trade up to the point where their marginal abatement costs are equal. So we know we have two conditions here. Um, so let's have the two conditions. Two conditions. Marginal abatement condition one. Marginal abatement cost of A is equal to the marginal abatement cost of B. And we know that the total emissions, EA, plus EB has to equal 20. Shouldn't have had. There we go. EB is equal to 20. Okay, so now let's figure out how much each of them are going to produce. All right, so let's set the marginal abatement cost equal. So that's going to lead to 20, 20 minus EA equal to 60 minus 3EB. Now let's plug in the condition number two. Plug in the condition number two. This is going to be implying that uh, we're plugging in EA, so EA is equal to 20 minus EB. To plug that in, we'll get 20 minus 20 minus EB equals 60 minus 3EB sixty minus three E B then we'll have um, twenty minus twenty cancel out we'll get um, plus E B equals sixty 
minus 3EB, and we'll get 4EB equals 60. Then EB star, the emissions for firm B are going to be 15 units of emissions. And then by condition number two, emissions for firm A has to be equal to five. Okay, so let's check the marginal abatement costs. Make sure they're equal. They should be equal, but we can just do this really quick. Um, marginal abatement cost from A equal to 20 minus EA. EA is 5, so the marginal abatement costs are going to be equal to $15. Marginal abatement cost for firm B equals 60 minus 3 times what do we have? 15 equals 15. So they're equal. Good. Okay. And what do we have on the graph? We have the permit price. What they're trading at is $15. We know that firm B is producing 15 units. Firm A is producing five units, so that works out good. Note that in policy one, in policy one, the marginal abatement costs were not equal. Marginal abatement cost for firm A was ten, and the marginal abatement cost for firm B is thirty. So firm B is actually paying more to reduce their emissions than firm A is. So they are going to want to purchase permits from firm A. So that's what we see down here in, in the cap and trade program. Firm A is reducing uh, emissions more than firm B. Firm A is reducing down to five units of emissions because it's cheaper for them to do so. Not sure what type of plant they are, but um, maybe uh, for some reason it's easier for them to reduce their emissions. So it doesn't cost them as much, so they're willing to sell their permits over to firm B, who has a steeper marginal abatement cost curve, who would like to emit more because it costs them more. So they're going to they're going to keep trading until their marginal abatement costs are equal, in which case the permits will be selling for um, fifteen dollars a piece. All right, so let's look at the total abatement costs under under this policy. Total abatement costs. The total abatement cost for firm A, total abatement cost for firm A equals the area, um, area under that curve. So basic, so what's this? We're going to be looking at this area here. Total abatement cost for firm A is going to be $15 times 15 units of emissions abated divided by 2, which is equal to 112.5 dollars. Total abatement cost for firm B is equal to 5, 5 units of emissions abated times, oops, 5 units of emissions abated times 15 dollars divided by 2 which is equal to 37.50. Okay, so that's area B. So this is A, this is B. Okay, so total abatement costs under this policy for, we'll call it cap and trade, equals total abatement cost for firm A plus total abatement cost for firm B which is equal to $150. Look at that. We're doing a lot better. We're saving $50. So our abatement cost under, total abatement cost under the quota was $200 up here. Total abatement cost under the cap and trade program is $150. So we're doing better under the cap and trade program. That's why economists argue for cap and trade programs all the time. Uh, because they're more cost effective than a quota system. Um, it allows firms that have higher marginal costs of abatement to uh, emit more 
and purchase per, um, purchase permits from uh, the firms with the lower marginal abatement costs. So we'd also find that um, in this, it seems as though firm A um, has a higher abatement cost, but they're actually going to be uh, selling permits to firm B, so they're going to be making some revenue off, to, off of their permits, and then their revenue is going to offset what they would have, um, what they would have, um, it's going to offset their additional abatement costs. So they're going to be happy. In reality, cap and trade, pro so economists have often argued cap and trade programs are really efficient. Um, we're finding out though in practice that they're really hard. It's really hard to set the, the quota at the right level. What happens is we'll set it, the quota, so we have a few cap and trade programs to look at in the world uh, now. We have some experience with them. There's one in California. There's uh, one in the northeastern United States called Reggie. Um, and there's one in the European Union. And what happens is we end up setting the emissions level too high um, so that basically the, the, the cap is non-binding and firms aren't really having to reduce their emissions. So what that does is it causes the permit price to, to basically be zero. So permits are free because nobody there's no demand for them. The emissions level in the cap and trade program is too high so nobody nobody needs to reduce emissions. Once you um, you can start inching that that quota or that uh, emissions level downwards and uh, until it's binding, but that whether or not it's binding is temporary. This it's a dynamic system. Emissions are are not a static thing; they're dynamic, and so um, as soon as you hit the level of of what we're the emission, as soon as we're we reduce our our um, our quota down enough. Um, to where it's actually binding and the permit price starts to creep up, um, something in the world changes, maybe demand for electricity changes causing emissions to go up, and then the, um, the quota is extremely binding causing, causing prices to skyrocket. So the point of this little digression is that um, a cap and trade program in, in theory is nice, but we're finding out in practice that it's really hard to set the the cap at a meaningful level, and then if you set it low and en low enough where it is meaningful, it causes the prices of permits to be really volatile. Um, so uh, that takes us to policy number three. Policy three. A tax. So let's tax to get um, tax to get EA plus EB equal to twenty. Um, so you should you should probably guess that the tax is going to be equal to fifteen dollars per unit of emissions because that's what we had in the cap and trade program. But let's solve for that. All right. So first we need to horizontally aggregate our marginal abatement cost curves. We're going to horizontally aggregate. Um, so let's take our, let's just do this here. Marginal abatement cost A equal to 20 minus EA. So therefore, we flip that around. E, uh, EA is equal to 20 minus um, the price or the tax or the whatever the um, uh, the marginal abatement cost is going to be. So we're just inverting this function so we can horizontally aggregate them. We're setting 
the marginal abatement cost equal, uh, which are, that's going to be equal to P. So then we know EA plus EB is equal to 40 minus 4 thirds P. So we're just aggregating up these functions. EA plus EB has to be equal to 40 minus 4 thirds P. All right, so we also want to set EA plus EB equal to 20. We want to keep our emissions level the same. So this kind of obvious what we're going to do here. Plug in that there. We'll get 20 equals 40 minus 4 thirds P. That means 4 thirds P is equal to 20. So P star or tax the price of emissions has to be equal to $15 in order to get 20 units of emissions. So this is the same solution as before is in the cap and trade program except there's tax revenue generated so that's kind of nice. Um, how do we figure out what is the tax revenue? Um, so let's let's go back to our graph. Okay. So we have, we know that the price of emissions has to be $15. You know, that means that firm A is going to produce 5 units of emissions. Firm B is going to produce 15. So we have some areas here, A, B, and C, D, E. Okay, so tax paid is equal to tax paid by A. Let me get that back here. Let's go. Maybe we'll do it here. Tax paid by A, firm A, equal to the area A. So they're paying uh, five, five, or fifteen dollars per unit per per unit of emissions, and they're emitting five units of emissions. So that's equal to seventy-five dollars. Total abatement cost for firm A is equal to BE. So that's that triangle again. That's going to be the same thing as we had before. $112.50. Tax paid by B is going to be ABC. So firm B is emitting 15 units of emission, so they have to pay the tax on. 15 units of emissions, which in the tax is $15 a piece, so that's $225. Total abatement cost for firm B, that's equal to DE, which is equal again to $37.50. So we have the same total abatement cost uh, for the tax. It's going to be $150, same total abatement cost as we had under the cap and trade program, but in this case we're generating some revenue for the government, which is kind of nice. We could say that the, the emissions permits were not given away for free, so up here in the cap and trade program we assume that the emissions permits were given away for free, so there was no money generated, there was no revenue generated for the government, um, but uh, we could say that the, the government sold the emissions permits uh, and they generated revenue to, to do so uh, or by doing so um, but the tax uh, directly generates revenue which could be used for a number of things we could use it to offset um, uh, inefficient policies like our um, our income taxes or our property taxes we could offset the deadweight loss we create by providing lump sum transfers to um, people um, we could also use it, uh, in this case, where we are taxing a market with an, a negative externality, like a pollution externality, we could use that revenue to uh, invest in uh, cleaner technology. Um, so we could be um, reducing our emissions in two ways, reducing it by uh, putting a tax on, directly on the, on the market, so causing the quantity of, quantity of the product to decline, 
quantity demanded to decline, but also we could be cleaning up the market by taking the tax revenue and investing it wisely. Okay, so that's three different policies. Uh, we have a, a quota, we have a cap and trade program, we have a tax. Um, we've seen that the quota is the least cost effective. The quota is um, has a total abatement cost of two hundred dollars. The cap and trade program and the tax have equal abatement costs, um, but the tax uh, the tax generates uh, revenue that can be spent in a number of ways. The tax is also nice because um, it's it's easier to get the well we know what the cost of the tax is going to be because we set it in the cap and trade program we don't necessarily know what the cost of the tax is going to be we don't know what the cost of the permits is going to be we don't know the price of permits we only know uh, what the emissions level is so in the cap and trade program the benefit there is you know what your emissions levels are going to be because you set them directly but you don't know what the price of those emissions are going to be in the tax you know what the price of emissions are going to be but you don't necessarily know what the level of emissions are going to be ex ante or, or prior to setting the tax. So uh, that's where we're going. We're going to try to figure out what the optimal tax on, tax on carbon emissions is using what's called an integrated assessment model. Um, and um, so you'll often hear that economists say that the tax is the most efficient policy. And that's This is why. It's probably not the most politically viable policy. So we asked that question, which policy is the most politically viable? In the last set of lecture notes, probably not a tax, but it's the most efficient and cost effective. Well, it's equally efficient to a cap and trade program, but it's the most uh, cost effective and it also generates revenue. And it's also the, the, uh, the, the one that um, we can guarantee a certain price for emissions. So let's figure out how to uh, calculate the optimal tax on carbon emissions.